That's good to know. We're on a good mood, right? There's a few of you up here that looks like you wish you would have brought a big old fucking bag of mushrooms tonight, don't you? I can see. You should have. I told you we're going to take down a little fucking ride tonight. But I will tell you that uh, this tour has been very gratifying for the band itself because not only have we been able to dive a little deeper down the rabbit hole of some of the Godsmack material that we never really get to play on the big stages, some of the deeper cuts, but we've also had the opportunity to share with you some of our favorite childhood cover songs from some of our favorite bands. Like Pink Floyd and Led Zeppelin, some of the greats that have paved the way for bands like us. And uh, I think what it's reminded us the most of is how amazing music has always been in our lives and what a gift it's really been. Because I think that's really what the theme of this whole evening is about, is the gift of music and how powerful it is. And even though we all experience it in our own special ways, this like universal language that we all speak, it doesn't matter what country you're in, you could be sitting next to someone that you don't even know the language and you could have this amazing musical experience individually. But for me, music became something that I started realizing that it's much more powerful than that. It's something that not only has become the soundtrack to all of our lives, but it's this one anomaly, I will say, that I don't know anything that's more powerful than music where you can hear a song and it can take you right back to that time and place when you first heard it. You know, and, and not only give you those memories, but really kind of give you the feelings and just kind of really put you back in that time and place when you were there with your friends or experiencing those wonderful memories you guys had for that special song that you guys love so much. And uh, I don't know anything else that's that powerful. Maybe scent, right? Scent is one of those things where you can like smell something and you can really go back to that time and place and remember, you know, someone's home or whatever it is your childhood memories. But I was, I remember, I'll tell you a quick story. I remember um, being on a tour bus years ago and uh, I was sitting with a friend of mine and we were sharing a bottle of wine and we were talking about this exact conversation, this kind of like, what is music? How, why is it so powerful? Why does it affect us the way it does? And as we were having this conversation, a song came on the radio by a band, some of you may know them, some of you may not. It's a band called The Mamas and the Papas. It's a song called California Dreaming. Great song, right? I'm not gonna play that right now. I don't even know it. But I will say, <laughs> you gonna boo me? Well, we've only been here a half hour and already doing it. Uh, no, I, I do agree, it's an amazing song. Um, but what I got from it was, we're having this conversation and I start to get all these feelings. And I'm thinking like, wow, this song is powerful. Like, it's heavy, it's sad sounding, but it's fucking beautiful, these melodies are amazing. But I had no connection to it lyrically, but yet I'm feeling all these emotions. So we started to ask people, what, what is it about music that affects you in an emotional way like that? And of course, a lot of people will come back and they'll say, well, it's the lyrical content, right? It's, it's that thing that they're talking about in the song that connects me to a certain situation that I reflect on in my own life. And I'm like, okay, well, fair enough, but why is it we can go watch a violin player play all by ourselves and it can literally bring you to tears? And to me, that's when we started going really down the rabbit hole. Now we're fucking two bubbles of wine into the conversation. You know? like, oh shit. Did we, did we make this up? Are we the geniuses? Did we invent this? Like, because when you think about it, right? Music is nothing more than sound waves, okay? Hang with me for a second on this, because I'm about to give, I'm going to take you on a deep dive into the fucking crazy mind of Sully Erna. This is. Oh. This is the shit that I think about when I'm alone sometimes, right? And I drive myself crazy. And there's only a couple things that freak me out, by the way. There's only a couple things that I cannot wrap my head around. Music is one of them, and I'll explain that in a second, but I'll tell you a couple others. Fucking outer space. Weird. Weird, and I'll tell you what, not the aliens. I want to meet those little fuckers. I have a few things to say, and that's amazing. I'm talking about outer space. Just the concept that, like, you can 
fucking shoot off this planet in any direction, right? Like, we're on a round ball, and they're saying that you can shoot off the planet in any direction. Like, you don't even have to take any lefts or rights. Just go fucking straight. Forever. <laughs> Forever? Really? Well, you don't hit a fucking wall at some point? You don't fall off the edge of the galaxy, like sucked into a wormhole? And then if you go in a wormhole, where the fuck does that take you? Forever. You know, listen, people, do you know how long forever is, by the way? It's a long fucking time, is my point. Okay? So that's kind of, that, that one, I don't know, I don't register, it numbers, yeah, numbers is another one, like, you, they, I want to know what the fucking largest number is right now, and they're like, well, you, there is no largest number, you can just add one to it, and I'm like, fuck you, you know what I mean, like, what's the largest number, just fucking say it. Well, music, to me, became this kind of anomaly when I started thinking about it this way, because if you think about music, right, your favorite songs, orchestras, rock bands, jazz, blues, I don't care what it is, Every sound in the world, from our voices to the best music, are nothing more than sound waves, okay? But if you keep breaking it down, a sound wave is nothing more than a frequency. And a frequency is nothing more than a simple vibration. So if I tighten this string up really tight and pluck it, it's going to make a higher sound. If I loosen it up a little bit, it's a little fatter, it'll make a lower sound. But they're just vibrating, right? This is, whether it's a drum head, a piano, a guitar string, your vocal cords, they're just creating frequencies from vibrations. So my question is, if music is nothing more than simple vibrations, why does it affect us emotionally? So, if I played you this chord, which is an E major chord, sounds kind of normal, right? Happy, like it doesn't offend you, does it, ma'am? At all? No. But if I just change the position of my fingers and I tighten up these frequencies and change the vibrations. Woo! Kind of sounds sad, right? Right? That's what I'm saying. So, what, well, who made those fucking rules, is my point? Who said that this was going to be the sad vibration? There's no lyrics or anything here, but if I hit this... Like, why wasn't this the happy chord? Why, like, when, when I play this, you're like... Right? And this would have been like a bummer. No, I can't even do the bummer phase right now. So I'm sitting there going like, wow, this is really insane to me because every song I've ever known and ever loved in my life are nothing more than simple vibrations. And if I pluck these things out of order... They make no sense to you, right? Nothing, no connection. But if I just start changing the order of the sequence... It all starts making sense, right? Maybe brings you back to that time and place when you first heard the song. Maybe. Y'all know this song, right? You gonna help me sing it? Thank you. 
Just vibrations. 